Across Bath, Westbury and Warminster, this is Radio Bath. So, Nick, this is the moment that I'm, if I'm honest, I'm slightly nervous about. Yeah. Um, because uh, I've worked with you before, obviously. <laughs> You've directed me before, but um, not in a long time and I haven't performed in a long time. Mm. So, I think... What I'm doing now, actually, is also giving an insight into the first stage of the rehearsal process, which is that you, you as an actor, you do need to butter up your director. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> go easy on me. Um, so last night, mate, I spent about 45 minutes preparing Sonnet 18 mm-hmm. uh, by Shakespeare. Um, I was quite drawn to it because I was reading through, and um, it's one that obviously I know lots of people know, and you know, it's 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 fairly well read, I'd say, compared to the other sonnets, I suppose. But um, I was reading through it and I actually pulled some some different things out to to what I have in the past. Um, I think a lot of people read this sonnet as being about, obviously about love and what love means, and I completely agree with that. But last night when I was reading it through, I almost got a sense that there was something melancholic about it. There's, there was Shakespeare's maybe um, commenting on, on someone that perhaps isn't actually alive anymore, or something along those lines. So that's my interpretation. Mm. Of, of this at the moment so um, I'll give it a quick read yeah and I think just a quick thing to note is actually um, a lot of people think the actors come in to a rehearsal room straight away and they have the script for the first time and they start there and then mm. but actually the process for an actor and starts weeks before and for me I'd want them coming with their lines learnt within a kind of just even 40 minutes looking at one one sonnet that it's that they already have an idea of an, an kind of ideas that they can give and we can then structure and, and kind of play around with. And work um, with it, yeah. And work with it. It's not fresh from the first time on day one of rehearsal. They've The actors already have a good idea of what they're doing um, and it's then the discussion and then mm. that's when the um, the performance will be created by the end. Okay, brilliant. But yeah, go ahead. Shall I give it a read? Yeah, it's lovely to hear it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaf hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines by chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Crack him. Really, 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 really nice. I think the first thing um, what I like to do when I'm tackling and working with an actor is to go, what um, what stands out within this within this sonnet that makes me go, uh, that may be where that's the in to the performance. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's quite interesting that the first line is a question. Yes. And... Um, all of this, following on from that, is the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, and I, so I think uh, what I'd like to ask you is, um, what's your answer to that first question? So, I get the sense that he, it's quite a clear no. He's, he, he, that's what he's exploring afterwards. He's going, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Yeah. Is the question. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of goes, well, actually, you're more lovely and a bit more moderate than summer. Yeah. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. You know, some rough winds in May... Uh, sometimes summer's too short, sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, sometimes summer's too hot, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, often there's yeah. there's clouds in the way of the sun. So Shakespeare kind of goes, I can do, but at the same time, maybe not. And then moves on, My, the the part where I feel that he, he really resolves that question um, is when he says, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. So he kind of goes, well, you're kind of like summer, but you're not like summer. And also... You don't fade. Your eternal sunshine doesn't fade at all. So you're here. And then he goes, hmm, how can I, how can I ensure that that happens forever? And kind of goes, well, through writing this sonnet, yes. you will, your beauty will live on forever. So I feel like this it's, and that's what the wonderful thing about Shakespeare for me is that there's a wonderful mixture of about a thousand things <laughs> going, <laughs> going on at once. But yeah, that's, that would be my response to that. Yeah. And, and that's exactly where I was coming to. Yeah. So that first, answer is it is essentially no no i can't i can't do that but what i can do is make you sound even like you're even better than this 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 sunshine you're better you're better than a summer's day and all of that and i think the crux of it is going back to having you can we can make you 
you can live on forever and ever because I'm writing this thing for you. Mm. And that's the resolution. So you've kind of got an answer, uh, a question, an answer, and then a resolution at the end of mm. it. Mm. Um, if we quickly go through it and we can look at where the, the thoughts are, yes. because that's really what drives, um, drives performance. And as, as human beings, we do think in thoughts. Even this conversation now, I don't know what I'm going to say mm. in my next sentence. Yeah, yeah. I'm in response to what I'm saying now or in response to what you're saying. So um, if, we, if we quickly read through it line by line and we can see where the thoughts are. So if you wanted to read the first line. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? No, we can't. No. <laughs> Carry on. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shape the darling buds of May. And summer's lease hath all too short a date. I feel like at that point there's a bit yeah. of a resolution there. Yeah, I think I think he concludes it, and actually, if, if you follow the punctuation, it does conclude it there. Mm. It's, a, it's a full stop. So that is very much the, uh, the the first thought. You could argue that there is actually a, a a short thought within that first first line. So shall I compare these to a summer's day? First, the second thought. Sorry, thou art more lovely and more temperate. Mm. That that. Then you've got your third thought, rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and summer leaves hath all too short a date. If you read those first four lines for me, and th- and I want you to take a pause after every thought and think about it and how you're going to respond to it. Okay, So great. just those first four lines. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Lovely. I'm starting to get a sense and actually breaking away from how we don't speak like this anymore. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I understand exactly what you're saying because yeah. you're giving me the time to think about what you're saying. So yeah. give, give more time mm. in between because I feel like when you're performing Shakespeare, there's a tendency to just fall into the trap of, of kind of running through it yeah. and garbling, garbling your way through, but actually slowing down, introducing those pauses allows the listener to understand more thoroughly what you're trying to communicate. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, it's a fine line between having an, a, a pause that you're, for, you're putting in there mm. and, a, and actually you're doing a performance of thinking. Mm. And um, I think that's, that's the slight difference. I wouldn't say you're pausing between. I said that as an exercise to yeah, pause. Yeah, yeah. But in, in the actual performance, all you're doing there is you're essentially... Think you're doing just your thinking time of how you're going to respond, and that's the that's the trying to make the parallel between a performance and the natural life that how mm. we we can see how people think. Um, if you carry on, let's see where um, uh, the next thought ends. Sometime too hot, the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines. I feel like there may have been a short one there. However, it's kind of. At this point, I feel like he, there's a build, so mm-hmm. there's a bit of confidence being built as we're moving through it, because we go, sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. I feel like at that point, he, like the natural rhythm is speeding up. He's kind of like, ah, oh, yes, yes, I understand mm-hmm. what I'm, I'm starting to begin to understand what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Yeah, and th- that's the thing with thoughts, is you add on thoughts... If we were to write down a, a trans, like to transcribe a conversation, most of it would probably be commas. You'd never have full stops because you're <laughs> yeah. adding on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, and actually, you can see that exactly here. The next full stop is when in eternal lines to time thou growest. Mm. That is, that's the, the final full stop. So let's, um, I want you to play around with the punctuation just so from some time too hot. Uh, sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines and play on the punctuation what's adding on to the adding on to the thought and and letting it grow yeah um because the more you play around with that that final line when in eternal lines to time thou growest will hit even harder because Mm. that i think is the for me is what i really like about this sonnet Mm. is actually it kind of takes slightly meta in a way it's taking the point of the the poet of the sonnet and making it like this thing as itself mm. is the perform is um it's really hard to explain uh, but uh we're eternalizing that person within the sonnet right now right now right now right now yeah. and we're doing that now and the more that it's performed what i love about it is the more that it's performed so even now shakespeare's intention is absolutely coming through it's doing exactly we're, the same thing. we're still discussing yeah the, the beauty of the person even now today so um cool i will for um, just that fi- yeah for almost final time just reading adding on and building up um 
And building up can be in various ways. It's not in volume, it's not in, in speed, in, in pitch or anything like that. Um, go see where it takes you, but recognise the punctuation as well, I think, the, is the idea. Absolutely. Cool. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. Keep going. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. And that, I feel, is he's talking to us there. Yes, yeah. So as long as men can breathe, so as long as the human race can, can, can are alive and people can see, this poem is giving you eternal life. I mean, you... And that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> and this is why I love Shakespeare and this yeah. is why I think, uh, you know, it, it gets me down, actually, um, when I hear people describe Shakespeare maybe as being boring or not accessible. You know, it's very complex language yeah. and it's, it's, it's incredibly hard to read. Well, I find particularly having not performed uh, for two years. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But at the end of the day, it's fun and it's it's very efficient in communication. The as a as a performer, I always feel like um, somewhat the lines are almost ahead of the. Th- I, I don't know how he does this, but but the line is ahead of the the thought. So you're kind of having to work really hard to try and discover in in the line in the moment. Whereas yeah. I think with modern writing, um, there's a lot more thought line thought line thought line where Shakespeare's just like now I'm going to give it all to you over the line it's a different structure yeah he's got a structure here that makes makes that happen through the punctuation and the iron big pentameter and um, all these various different ways of mm. of communicating it's 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 different and that very much now we do think thought answer thought answer thought answer whereas he has an overarching thought and has things to aid that um and that's not saying one's better or the other this is it's it's a different it's just different, different yeah, form of that's writing all it is. that's all um, it is i would ask the question now do you still feel like this sonnet is melancholic i do actually i, I really do yeah. um and it's and i know it's also important sometimes um to to not be so fixed in your thinking mm. As a performer, so you can't when when you instinctively react to something, yeah. and I go, it's melancholic. It's then important for me not to sit there for too long. Um, it's 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 for me the mention of death and the the want and the need to try and eternalize this person. Yes, I I, I think it could be coming from such passion and love for somebody that you you love somebody so much that you you want their beauty and and their person to be to be infinite. But um, the fact that he talks about uh, that not even death can, can take you and he's trying to return, like, for me it's, it's like almost like there's a struggle there. Shakespeare's struggling with something and he's almost desperately trying to find a way to, to help this person live again. Yeah. But um, I'm not fixed in that, so if you've got another eye... idea. No, and I think uh, melancholic doesn't mean down and sad. It, uh, like it, yes. There's, there's yeah. various attributes that you can attach to this whole sonnet as well to aid, like to change the performance and all of that. I was just curious to see if, if uh, from that was the one thing I really highlighted from what you first said when you were talking about it, mm. to see if anything has changed. And things do change, things don't change, and that, that is the rehearsal process. Yeah, yeah. Well, brilliant, Nick. That was wonderful. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that we'll, we'll continue. We'll, yeah. come, we'll come back to this. I'm, I'm going to I feel like another important part of performance is taking the time to reflect, actually. That that happens a lot more than, than people think. Very much, and I wouldn't want to do any more work on this. There is more, hundred more things we could do on it, but you need the time for reflection to see how, it, how it's going to, ch- if it will change, um, and we'll look back on it in a couple of weeks' time, and then we would see... Um, how it's shifted. See how it's shifted, or hasn't shifted. Um, and then that's when we come to performance. That's incredible. The, the power of your subconscious to help move your performance forward and yeah. not being so caught up in your head that you have to find all of the answers here now today yeah. it's a slower more um, reflective subconscious process I find that really yeah. interesting because again it's I, I don't feel like people necessarily get that insight when they watch a performance on stage it's no and it's say if this was um, obviously this is a sonnet this is a standalone yes. piece of work yeah. if it was a monologue or a soliloquy within a show other parts of the show will then inform that monologue. Mm. So you want to get through the show because the answers at the end will have, like, 
the way that w- way we get performance at the end of a show is all completely reflective on what happens at the start and we see then a journey start middle and end so it's all about working through pretty quickly all the show mm. to then go oh we now know the answer to that bit within that monologue We've in act it. two yeah. because they answer it in act four scene two whereas with the sonnets i mean it's a standalone so really you- this the best insight into i feel i don't you know as i said you know i just I, i'm just very passionate about shakespeare so i wouldn't yeah. say you know i'm uh, i'm well read in the area but i'm not by no means you know <laughs> it's just a passion for me but i feel like we really get an insight into the mind of shakespeare in his in his sonnets because as you said they're standalone yeah and it's almost like him commenting directly on it's the not world. character yeah exactly it's you very much do yeah see it's coming from his own pen and it's from from his own mind to his own pen and then that well quill <laughs> <laughs> quill yeah the quill <laughs> yeah and yeah it's, it's come from it comes from him yeah Definitely. Okay, so we'll um, we'll return to this a little bit later on. Yeah, but, um, thanks, Nick. That was, That's okay. That no was brilliant. And if anyone's got any questions um, for Nick about acting, performance, uh, Shakespeare, please do get in touch. You can tweet us on at radiobath underscore com. Search for us on Facebook, Radio Bath, and also on Instagram, or ping an email over to the studio, studio at radiobath.com. But we're going to go to some music, and then uh, after after we've listened to some uh, to some music, I'm going to catch up with Anna from Amosa Performance. <laughs> 